Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel, The Reaction Story. My name is Neha and today I'm here with another video. Uh, so uh, in today's video, I'm going to react on the difference between UK, Britain and England. Well, uh, for Asian countries, it is really very, very confusing. We we actually not, uh, you know, find difference between all these countries. We just think that this is all same. Well, actually, it's not. <laughs> I know this because my brother is living in uh, England and he tell me everything about uh, the other parts uh, related to United, the United Kingdom of Great Britain. So I know little uh, about uh, uh, differences between all these countries. But for other Asian people, like uh, I live in India and whenever I tell someone that my brother uh, live in England, they say, okay, so he is living in UK. And someone say, okay, so he is living in London. Sometimes it's really very difficult to, you know, tell them that no, these all are different countries. But uh, is just okay uh, when someone tell uh, they can definitely understand these all differences but really it's very confusing for some people i think uh, for asian people this is really very tough and i'm sure that for other countries people it's also the same problem so uh, let's solve this problem with watching this video together and let's solve what is and let's find actually what is the difference between all these countries but i am really fond of uh, you know great britain so uh, i make some other videos on uh, about uk and great britain you can also watch it on my channel just like uh, the history of britain the crusade against slavery i make a lot of videos on uh, the great britain so you can definitely check out i will give all the link in my description box and if you not subscribe this channel then please subscribe this channel for watching my more interesting videos so okay without wasting any time let's get into this video place are they different places do british people secretly laugh at those who use the terms incorrectly who knows the answers to these questions i do and i'm going to tell you right now for the lost, this is the world, this is the European continent, and this is the place we have to untangle. The area shown in purple is the United Kingdom. Part of the confusion is that the United Kingdom is not a single country, but instead is a country of countries. It contains inside of it four co-equal and sovereign nations. The first of these is England, shown here in red. Yes. England is often confused with the United Kingdom as a whole because it's the largest and most populous of the nations and contains the de facto capital city, London. To the north is Scotland, shown in blue, and to the west is Wales, shown in white. And often forgotten so by those who live in the United country. Kingdom is Northern Ireland, shown in orange. Each country has a local yes. term for the population. While you can call them all British, it's not recommended as the four countries generally don't like each other. The Northern Irish, Scottish, and Welsh regard the English as slave-driving colonial masters. No matter that all three have their own devolved parliaments and are allowed to vote on English laws, despite the reverse not being true, and the English generally guard the rest as rural yokels who spend too much time with their sheep. However, as the four constituent countries don't have their own passports, they are all British citizens, like it or not. They are British citizens yes. of the United Kingdom, whose full name, by the way, is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So where's Great Britain hiding? Right here. The area oh covered in God, black is Great Britain. So Unlike England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern <laughs> Ireland, Great Britain is a geographical rather than a political term. Great Britain is the largest island among the British Isles. Within the United Kingdom, the term Great Britain yes. is often used to refer to England, Scotland, and Wales alone with the intentional exclusion of Northern Ireland. This is mostly, but not completely true as all three constituent countries have islands that are not part of Great Britain, such as the Isle of Wight, part of England, the Welsh Isle of Anglesey, the Scottish Hebrides, the Shetland Islands, the Auckland Islands, and the Islands of the Clyde. The second biggest island in the British Isles is Ireland. It's yes. worth noting at this point that Ireland is not a country. Like Great Britain is a geographical, not political term. Yes. The island of Ireland, Ireland contains only two country. countries, Northern Ireland, which we have already discussed, and the Republic of Ireland. When people say they are Irish, they are referring to the Republic of Ireland, which is a separate country from the United Kingdom. However, both the Republic of Ireland and the United Kingdom are members of the European Union, even though England in particular likes to pretend that it's an island in the mid-Atlantic rather than 50 kilometers off the coast of France. But that's a story for another time. To review, the two largest islands in the British Isles are Ireland and 
Great Britain. Ireland has on it two countries, the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, while Great Britain mostly contains three, England, Scotland, and Wales. These last three, when combined with Northern Ireland, form the United Kingdom. Yeah. There are still many unanswered questions, such as why when you travel to Canada is there British royalty on the money? To answer this, we need to talk about empire. You can't have gone to school in the English-speaking world without having learned that the British Empire once spanned a fourth of the world's land and governed nearly a fourth of the world's people. While it's easy to remember the parts of the British Empire that broke away violently, we often forget how many nations gained independence through diplomacy, not bloodshed. These want to be nations struck a deal with the empire, where they continue to recognize the monarchy as the head of state in exchange for a local autonomous parliament. To understand how they are connected, we need to talk about the crown. Not the physical crown that sits behind glass in the Tower of London and earns millions of tourist pounds for the UK, but the crown is a complicated legal entity best thought of as a one-man corporation. Who created this corporation? God did. According to British tradition, all power is vested in God, and the monarch is crowned in a Christian ceremony. God, however, not wanting to be bothered with micromanagement, conveniently delegates his power to an entity called the Crown. While this used to be the physical crown in the Tower of London, it evolved over time into a legal corporation soul, able to be controlled only by the ruling monarch. It's a useful reminder that the United Kingdom is still technically a theocracy, with the reigning monarch acting as both the head of state and the supreme governor of the official state religion, Anglicanism. Such are the oddities that arise when dealing with a thousand-year-old monarchy. Back to Canada and the rest. The former colonies that gained their independence yes. through diplomacy and continue to recognize the authority of the crown are known as the Commonwealth realm. They are, in decreasing order of population, Canada, Australia, Papua New Guinea, New Zealand, Jamaica, the Solomon Islands, Belize, the Bahamas, Barbados, so St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, and Tuvalu. All are independent nations, but still recognize the monarchy as the head of state, even though it has little real power within their borders. Yes. There are three further entities that belong to the crown, and these are the crown dependencies, the Isle of Man, Jersey, and Guernsey. Unlike the Commonwealth realm, they are not considered independent nations, but are granted local autonomy by the Crown and British citizenship by the United Kingdom, though the UK does reserve the right to overrule the laws of their local assemblies. Are we done now? Almost, but not quite. There are still a couple of loose threads, such as this place, the tiny city of Gibraltar on the southern coast of Spain, famous for its rock, its monkeys, and for causing diplomatic tension between the United Kingdom and Spain. Or what about the Falkland Islands, which caused so much tension between the United Kingdom and Argentina that they went to war over them? These places belong in the last group of crown properties known as British Overseas Territories, but their former name, Crown Colonies, gives away their origin. They are the last vestiges of the British Empire. Unlike the Commonwealth realm, they have not become independent nations and continue to rely on the United Kingdom for military and sometimes economic assistance. Like the Crown Dependencies, everyone born within their borders is a British citizen. The Crown Colonies are, in decreasing order of population, Bermuda, the Cayman Islands, the Turks and Caicos Islands, Gibraltar, the British Virgin Islands, Ecrateria and Dekelia, Anguilla, St. Helena, the Ascension Islands, Tristan da Cunha, Montserrat, the British Indian Ocean My Territory, God. the South Georgia and South Sandwich <laughs> Islands, the Falkland Islands, the British Antarctic Territory, and the Pitcairn Islands. For our final Venn diagram, the United Kingdom is a country situated on the British Isles and is part of the Crown which is controlled by the monarchy. Also part of the Crown in the British Isles are the Crown Dependencies. The independent nations of the former empire that still recognize the Crown are the Commonwealth Realm, and the non-independent remnants of the former empire are the British Overseas <laughs> Territories. Thank you very much for watching. Oh my god. Oh my god. Means he is so fast. Like he's... Blah, 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 blah. He is so fast. Well, actually, this is really very interesting way to tell the whole, you know, whole map in just you know five and something minutes oh my god he's so fast actually but it's okay i you know i understand everything so it's easy to uh it's really easy and comfortable for me to understand but for those people who are not able to understand uh so you know so instantly uh i will tell you that basically uh uk uh, is a sovereign state uh, included four countries. So basically it's England, Scotland, Wales and North, Northern Ireland. So it's included four countries, individually four countries. These all countries when we, uh, you know, when we called collectively, it's called UK, the United Kingdom of Great Britain. So England, is a different country that is uh, you know uh, basically england is the part of great britain so great britain included three countries that is england scotland and wales and when we add northern northern ireland it's become uk so i hope it's clear now and it's very now it's very easy to understand the whole map so it is really really very interesting now i you know tell uh, my friends and my colleagues about uh, you know about little and something about the map of uk so i hope it's clear 
uh, and I hope you like my reaction on this video. If you like this video, then please don't forget to subscribe this channel and tell me your valuable suggestion for further videos that which type of videos would you like to see on my channel? I will definitely make it for you. So till then, be happy, stay cool. Goodbye.